Okay, journey to Grandmaster. We have somebody on a journey to be a Grandmaster. Let's destroy their dreams. <laughs> Let's play this. And ah! This is going to be the most embarrassing video I have ever created. What's up, chess player? Welcome to the Journey to Godmaster, the place where you can improve every single aspect of your chess game. And I'm gonna show you this crazy, absolutely insane game against Alessia Santeramo. You probably know her from YouTube. She has a really big YouTube channel and we have played in the Title Tuesday tournament, so that was a pretty important game, but I blundered just everything there is possible to blunder. So let's take a look. I show you this game because you can learn so much and never repeat the mistakes I did here in your own games because I just can absolutely can't explain how on earth I could play this game so badly. So let me just go for it. B5, I'm playing here a C4, which is one of the possible lines just to protect that pawn. And if you take, then you have those double pawns and I can just continue playing in the center and that pawn, of course, is not gonna survive for a long time. So I'm gonna play b4, which is a completely normal move. Now I want to, to make e4 possible and go on and attack in the center and my opponent actually allows me to do that. He play, she plays bishop to g7 here instead of g6, which would stop the move e5. And here is the first moment I spent like around a minute uh, about my move. It's not the way you play in Blitz, especially in the opening, unless, I mean, you are in danger of losing the game immediately. You never spend a minute on one single move if you have three minutes for the entire game. It's just not a reasonable strategy. But, well, I wasn't at my best in this game, definitely. I mean, it's, it's far worse than that. So I did play e5 after a long thought. All right, my opponent woke up. The engine, by the way, says that yeah, e5 is the best move, so I'm not sure why it's just good. And that goes to g8, which is not that great. Like, you never want to go back, especially to the starting position where the castles is not possible now. I mean, it's making the life much more difficult for yourself. Instead, there was knight g4 opportunity, which is way more active. It's attacking the pawn here. I mean, that is the only move that I have calculated, so I was very surprised with knight g8. And at this point, I thought, well, everything is going great, so I need just to continue my development. Bishop to f4, d6, but that pawn does, uh, yeah, does actually create some difficulties for me because I have to think about it. What do I do? Do I allow uh, to, uh, black to capture or do I attack myself? I thought taking would be a good option because then this d6 pawn is going to be a weakness for the time being, knight d4. I mean, those are the ideas I was thinking about. But the engine uh, says it just everything completely wrong, should just play knight bd2, just develop your pieces and allow black to take, because apparently it's just absolutely nothing. Now this pawn is going to be a weakness. This d5 guy is very strong and yeah, it's just difficult to make a move as black because this knight, for example, can't really move. Knight c6 is incredibly annoying. Yeah, apparently that's just bad for black. So I took it instead here and then played bishop d3 because I was expecting bishop coming to f5 with the tempo and I thought that's annoying. But basically with every one of my moves, I lose the advantage here and there. Knight d7 is also not so great because, well, it does allow this idea once again, but I played a3 instead. Well, I just knew that it's a typical move. I played it way uh, uh, later than I should have because now it's not that problematic for black. She just played knight to a6 and now I can never take it. But I thought queen a4 is an interesting idea because I do give a check. And then queen d7, I mean, I thought it's not that de desirable for black. The engine says, well, this position is fantastic. Black was never so good as now in this game. It's around equal. And if takes, I can just conveniently take with the king. What's your problem, human? But I thought, yeah, it's not that simple for black. And my opponent thought exactly the same. Oh, I don't really want to trade the queens. So she played king of eight here. But of course, you never want to make such a move. But then I faced a problem here. And my next move, I mean, that is so incredible. I, I can never explain why on earth I played it. Because it's so bad. So the problem is my pawn is hanging. And 
it's it's quite an important point because once uh, you take it, the rook is hanging, then the c3 square is not covered. But the engine says, I mean, that's just almost winning for white if you just forget about this pawn and play knight b to d2. I thought also that the second pawn is hanging, so I cannot absolutely allow it. But guess what? The right move is just castles. Once again, the golden rule, development is the key, works here. You just need to sacrifice everything and finish your development. Just as simple as that. But, well, that was far from simple for me in the game because I'm giving up so much material. In fact, this position is like plus two and a half for white, pretty much objectively completely winning. I still have absolutely no idea how. Like, yes, I have a pair of bishops and yes, this guy is a monster, but why on earth is it so winning? Like, if you just play king g7, yeah, knight goes to e4, this pawn is hanging. If you play knight f5 to defend it, then bishop goes here, and apparently black is just collapsing. But from this point, when you just see this pawn hanging, you're just... It's just not possible, at least not for me, to imagine all of that coming. At least in this game, I wasn't at my prime at all. And I thought that a normal move queen c2, that was my desirable idea. But then black can take it. And I would, of course, be happy to take with the pawn because I do need to control the b4 square. But unfortunately, I'm going to lose the rook. So I have to allow this knight before. And then it's just not what I wanted to give up the bishop spare. And yeah, this guy is a monster. I just thought it's bad for me. So what did I do? Well, I made it a hundred times worse. Namely, I played rook a2. I mean, never ever even think of such a move. The rook is just so weirdly placed as well as the queen. My opponent just plays rook b8. And now b3 is a huge threat. And then I lose the b2 pawn. My queen is kind of trapped here because it has no moves to go. That was horrible. But what I did... Here is even worse because I played queen d1, which is a huge blunder. I just completely forgot that now after b3, my rook has to go back. And it was there in the first place to protect the pawn. So the pawn is going to be lost again. And I do lose that exchange, but comparing to the variation with the exchange sacrifice, I don't get any compensation whatsoever. So it felt like I'm just gonna lose... Uh, without any chances at all, very miserably here. So I play knight b2, I don't really have any choice. And if I would get the control of the diagonal, I mean, if you imagine this pawn is not there, this is a fantastic position for white because the bishop is also coming. But unfortunately, of course, b2 is played immediately and the entire diagonal is closed, not even mentioning the fact that that pawn on b2 is just hugely active, hugely strong here. I played bishop h6 check because at least I wanted to make sure that a king is not going to g7 because I thought that if I just play queen b1, black can go to g7 and I don't have that idea anymore. And rook is free to go this way. I thought uh, at least that rook is not playing and as long as that is not playing, I am not at material disadvantage. But the problem is it's very easy to solve as black. You, you could immediately play knight f5 and attack that bishop, because if I take, then bishop takes, and I mean, this pawn is just coming to be one. You cannot allow that. I want to play bishop b5, which is also bad enough for me, because after takes, takes, she plays knight f5 now, and once again, my knight, uh, sorry, my bishop on h6 has to go. But guess what? I completely missed the fact that the bishop is hanging. I mean, I blundered literally everything. There is a blunder in this game. Because I just played knight before here. I thought I'm attacking, I'm creating some threats, I'm coming with queen uh, c3 and knight f6 and probably delivering checkmate. And I didn't even thought about my opponent threats. And that is, of course, one of the first principles I always teach you. So whenever your opponent is making move, you have to forget about absolutely everything and just think about this one move. What is the idea? What is your opponent hoping for, dreaming about? What is the point of his move. And I just didn't do that for some reason. I mean, I thought the knight is coming somewhere here, covering the g7 square. It's active, okay, but somehow I never thought about the bishop hanging. And the way you should think about your opponent's moves is, of course, using the four steps system formula, which is checks, captures, threads, and active moves. So, well, the knight doesn't threaten to give any checks, but it threatens to just capture the bishop in one move. So there is absolutely no way I could have blundered that if I have used that formula. But 
yeah, I'm gu guilty of that as well. Not always I'm doing that and I'm paying my price. But of course, another golden, like basically my motto in life, never give up. I didn't give up here because, well, I still have a bunch of pieces that I can shuffle around. I am a full rook down and this rook is on h8. So that was my only relief that as long as it's not participating in the game, I'm just not any material down if you if you just count the active pieces because it's not the number of the pieces that matters but the quality of the pieces so i'm playing here rook b1 just to stop that idea in the first place she plays f5 and actually she played pretty good here coming up with these whole ideas connecting more pieces to the defense because as long as my attack is over the game is over so i'm playing queen c3 the queen is very active along this diagonal but Black plays knight g4, another best move, and now queen is coming to f6, and then I'm just losing this diagonal, or I'm just exchanging the queens, which is basically the same, and then I don't have anything at all. So I'm attacking that knight immediately, but queen f6 is still coming. And fortunately for me, at least I have one active move here, queen coming to a5, and now both knights uh, are hanging, and my opponent is a little bit under stress here, under pressure. My opponent plays here rook to b7, just protecting it. And then even though I can take this uh, guy and well, I took it because I don't have any other options at all. Now I have a problem with both knights because well, this knight is hanging and if it goes anywhere, then this uh, knight is going to be lost. I don't have knight e4. I don't know why I haven't thought about it during the game somehow. It didn't cross my mind at all, but like I said, this game is far from being uh, perfect. But it turns out there is queen f5 here and, well, desirable knight d6 fork is not possible because queen takes b1 check, but I do have knight d2 and then at least I'm protecting all of the knights and, well, I still have some play. But that is a completely different story. Instead, I played the move knight e6. Now, black takes and, of course, the more pieces are going off the board, the better it is for black because, in the end of the day, you remember there is an extra rook. But once again, as long as that rook is not participating in the game, it's just equal material here. Well, of course, after g takes f. So, we are continuing the play. I play queen to a6. I create a few threads. As long as you create threads, it's not that bad because, once again, you put your opponents under pressure. And especially if you're talking about blitz, yes, I have even less time, but still it's a blitz, only one second increment. As long as you create those threads, there is always a chance to win a pawn or two or maybe a piece and then win the game. So let's see what happened here. Queen went to g5, uh, threaten and checkmate thread in one. I cannot ignore it, so I'm playing g3 and then queen goes to f5. Well, now the rook is hanging with the check, but if I go away, then b1 is going to promote a, a new queen. So I just took the queen on b7 and then played king h2. And now that is what happened. Let's play this. And ah! So that is the reason you should never ever give up until you have at least one little chance to win, which was the queen's f7 threat in this case. And I guess the reason my opponent blundered it is because I took the rook here. I it's not like I specifically went there to create a thread. No, I just took the rook. So you don't think about this move uh, normally uh, in terms of, well, what the queen is doing on b7, what kind of threads it creates, because you think, well, the queen went there to take the rook. That's actually the wrong thought process. You should always think about this queen, like it just went to b7 and what does it want to do? what kind of ideas it has. You always should keep an eye on that. And then the second reason was that black took here the rook with the check and then king went to h2 and that was the, the last move that white made. So you're not really thinking about the second to last move, especially in blitz, you're thinking that, okay, I took here the rook so I can just continue and play queen c2, creating a lot of threats here, checkmate, b1, queen, and then of course, my opponent forgot to think about uh, the opening threads, which is queen f7 checkmate here. What was absolutely astonishing for me is the chess.com review, because it says we both played as, as 2300 rated players. I mean, if 2300 rated players are playing like that, then I'm very sorry, because I thought that is the most horrible game I have played in a while. And well, I still got a chance to win it in the end of the day, but it doesn't change the fact that I played so miserable. Anyway, I hope you're never gonna repeat my mistakes. You are gonna look at every single one of your opponent's moves. It's just essential in chess. No matter what's happening on the board and in your head, 
Whenever your opponent makes a move, just stop everything and think about this concrete move. And think of it in terms of the four steps system formula that would save you from making 99% of all blunders. Now, how to use that properly and how to play the, like the best game ever, I have shown you here. That is an incredible video. You're gonna learn so much and become a better chess player immediately afterwards.